My name is Jesse Roland Pra, mm -hmm. CEO of Roland Rice. So I'm a professional teacher. But during our time, there was embargo on teaching, so we didn't have get a chance to pursue uh, the, what we studied in the university. Yeah, we didn't get a chance. What brought me into this business was when I had a, an acre. I tried, harvested, processed and tasted the rice. I realized local rice tastes better than even the foreign rice that we've been consuming. So I decided to do more research. The answers that came in were the finishing was poor, there are stones in it, they see other foreign materials in it, they see the rice hacks too in it. So guys, this this is the package, one kilo uh, package of Roland rice. And it's nice. One, they are using paper. What does paper tell you? Yeah, eco-friendly. And look at the design, Charlie. And cooking directions. You also have cooking directions. Okay? In our local language. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so before we go, in fact, not knowing uh, Mr. Pra had them do some small magic with Roland rice. And just imagine, this is a jollof that was prepared by Roland rice. And then the aroma itself is different. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pra? Yeah. This is your rice. You are really enjoying it, eh? No, the drink. Salim, my name is the Mahi Bizi Iwan. episode is sponsored by Jack Lens Photography. If you are looking for any professional photographer for all your events in Ghana and outside Ghana, for weddings, parties, birthdays and corporate shoots, you can call us on 0249-793045 or email us on jacklensphotography at gmail.com. Thank you. That is the man himself. Is it Japan? Yes, sir. Wow, yes, sir. Wow, yes, sir. Wow, yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I miss you so much. Charlie, it's been a hectic journey, with Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so wonderful viewers. Um, um, I told you we'll do it, and now we are here. This is the man of the moment. This is the man himself. And uh, he is by the name Roland Pra. He will tell us what they do here. And I can see, I think they are doing some harvesting and some drying uh, of. of of rice here so you let's get inside and let's get more interactive with uh, our brother Charlie thank you mm. uh, Mr. Japan yes boss I welcome you once again thank you uh, this is our reception okay we are still under construction we are not yet done uh, but since you called us that you are coming we must make sure we, we receive you well. That's right. Yes, so That's right. That's uh, right. the next time you visit, you will see something more beautiful mm. than this. So this one is not... <laughs> yes, we are not yet done. <laughs> okay. This gentleman, when you come to Western Region, Takradi here, the name is on every list. Mm. So um, we decided to come here and get closer to him and know the journey so far and how he even entered into farming. So, Mr. Roland, yeah. I just mentioned your name, but then kindly give us some brief uh, introduction about yourself. And let's okay. see. Uh, my name is Jesse Roland Pra. Mm -hmm. um, I attended Infante Pim mm -hmm. Secondary School. That was, I completed 2007. From okay. there, I went to University of Education to study construction technology. So, BA in construction technology. Construction? Yes, technology. Okay. So I'm a professional teacher. So I'm supposed to be in this classroom teaching building and construction. Mm -hmm. But 
during our time there was embargo on teaching so we didn't have get a chance to pursue uh, the, what we studied in the yeah. university yeah we didn't get a chance so we started writing applications to most of the companies in western region if we will get a chance because since we didn't get a chance into teaching we must look elsewhere we wrote applications and nothing was coming we didn't hear any from any of the companies so some years came by and uh, i heard of a company looking for engineers mm -hmm. that will supervise an irrigation project mm -hmm. uh, looking at my certificate i'm supposed to be in the classroom teaching yeah. so they went through my cv so everything they realized i'm supposed to be in the classroom i'm not fulfilled work so i have to prove to them that they should try me and see and the project that they gave me was an irrigation scheme for rice production that was at Takwa Simpa. Okay. So uh, I took the pain to work with them for a year. It was a year contract. So during the construction of the dams, the irrigation, the canals and everything, I realized that since it's into farming and farmers, there's a saying that Ekweni mm. Because this contract is a year contract, so after the contract, I have, I have to look for another job. Meaning you, you can't sack a farmer or yes. you can't retire a, a farmer. farmer. Mm. So with the farming side, you will always be working. So I decided to go into rice farming. That was my first and that was in 20, 2015. Now wait, now in the building of the dams, and where did you learn that? Or was that okay, part because of Because my field was construction. Mm. So this project was about construction okay. so concrete works building of the dams and everything it's about construction okay. so due to my knowledge in construction it gave me a upper hand mm -hmm. for that side so everything was done well then since we are done with so you were hired as a contractor or no, to as be a, a supervisor. supervisor yes a clerk so of it, yeah. it wasn't even part or related to the actual rice farming no, itself no 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 yeah so after the contract farmers came in to start production of farming rice mm -hmm. and i decided to be part of the farmers i had one acre and you see what brought me into this business was when i had a, an acre i tried harvested processed and taste the rice i realized local rice tastes better than even the foreign that rice that we've been consuming mm -hmm. So I decided to do more research to know why we are not consuming our locally produced rice. Sure. So I started getting results. The results came in with what I produced okay. for my acre. Mm. But I gave them out as samples okay. for people to really taste because I was really happy I had cultivated rice. And it's, it's, it's your and hard yes, work. yes. So the mindset hadn't come for the branding. It was just gift for people to try. Mm. So within a week, results started coming. People will call, ah, Jesse, the rice you gave us, where did you buy it from? It's so nice. Where can we get some to buy? And I said, oh, I cultivated it myself. They said, no, how? Since when did you become a mm. farmer? So the demand started. And I had already shared the rice and I wasn't having any rice. And people were started started calling on me to give them rice. So I had to, the other farmers that also produce the same uh, variety, sure. I had to start relying on them that, that hey, what we produce, there is demand for it. So they started selling to me. Then I also sell to the people that were demanding. So um, if I would ask, you said you did, you did some research into it. Yes. How, what, what, so what, what was the The research, research was, why people weren't consuming our local rice mm. the answers that came in were the finishing was poor okay. there are stones in it yes. they see other foreign materials in it they see the rice hacks too in it mm -hmm. and sometimes to um the difficulty in cooking because there are no instructions okay. yes because if you take the foreign rice it's well written that maybe use two cups of water 
or one cup of water. You see, they, they do that. But with the local rice, they just give it to you in a black politin. Well, they will cook it this way. Yes. So the results wasn't, the, or the, the, the finding wasn't related so much on the grains. Not about the greens, but then the processing, the processing, the cooking, uh, the appearance, a whole lot came. In fact, there were a lot of complaints. Mm. So we had to sit down and see how best we can improve on the quality of yes. rice. Yes. So when I started this business, I was doing the stoning manually. Mm. See the number of bags of rice will be destoning them manually to make sure that nobody bites into stone. Sure. Yes. Nobody bites into stone because that's the major, that is the major uh, yes. yeah, headache. So we started doing those things manually. So our rice, when it came into the market, people got to know that it's different from the local rice they've been buying. Mm. The finishing is good. You will not be seeing impurities. It means it's well refined. So it gave us on top of other local brands. Although we weren't having quality machines as at then to be processing the rice, but we were we make sure before the rice gets to the consumer, it's neat. Wait, okay, okay. finish, finish. So another rice. thing was the packaging. Mm. Okay. So we started working on how to make the appearance. Because even the person not seeing the content, the outside appearance will also um, attract the person to buy your product. So we worked on the packaging side for it to be more and that, that one really worked for you because yes yes i remember the first time i saw your your is it one one, the one kilo, kilo. yeah the one yeah. kilo yeah it was very nice very was, nice yes yes so now how did you end up in this or with this 50 acre farm because it's serious <laughs> now you started yeah you're giving it out you went to French. Charlie, the rice is, is tasty and people want it. How did you trans, translate to now? This kind of now, you can be seeing, all of you will be seeing this, this um, 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 the, the land and everything on the screen. How did you get this thing? So, you see, in every business, you start gradually from one step to another step. So, I tried with one acre, realized how rice cultivation, the entire process, the entire value chain. I had, I had to study it well mm -hmm. before I do any large scale. Sure. So from one, I went to 10 acres. Mm -hmm. From 10 acres, slowly to about 20, before 50, and now we are even dealing with over 400 acres. 400? Yes, in the Shaman district. So we have- 400? Out, yes, we have outgrowers that also produce- For Roland rice? Yes, for Roland rice as a brand. Yeah. Wow, because of the demand. Mm. You see, so in every business, when you get you get, you get the business line, you need to improve on it and make it sustainable. Well, from 2015 to 2023, if you check the number it's of eight years, years, yes, eight years, yes. but the brand itself will be six years next month, mm. July. So for two years, you were two years, yeah, I was doing my homework, yes. This, Making sure that, that when a brand complain, comes, yes. they talk, you touch it and... Yeah, yeah. So for the, that two years, I was working on the brand to make sure that when it's in every home, there will be no complaints. Wow. Yes. Let <laughs> me say your point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, how, how did you do it? Getting this a lot of people to buy or to be part of, of this Roland Rice vision. How did you, you give us... Because... As, as, as much as you are motivating her, I want people to also learn from practical uh, strategies that are used by okay. people like so, you. So, um, with every businessman, mm -hmm. uh, you need to involve yourself. Okay. You need to put your all in it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm always on the field, okay. making sure we get quality rice. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the variety itself, the variety itself also counts. You must know what consumers want. Mm -hmm. You must really know what your consumers want. So we realize there are certain varieties our consumers prefer than other varieties. So that's what we produce more. Okay. Then your packaging, people will tell you, maybe do it this way, improve on it. You need to be listening to your consumers also because 
they, they say consumers are always right. Yes. Yes. The consumer is or, or, or the customer is, is always right. Always right. So that's what we worked on. So we, with this years, I've involved myself and I attend seminars on businesses, how to improve your business, how to uh, uh, record keeping. Mm -hmm. uh, those things are very important as a businessman. You need to keep records to know that you use this m amount of money to buy this machine. You have the receipts there. You want to do this. You draw your plan for the next five years. So in my old place where I started, I started in a garage mm -hmm. where I was doing the packaging. Okay. That place on, uh, on the wall, I've written my five years development plan. Mm -hmm. It's there. So always when I, or I walk into my uh, packaging room, I always see that in five years time, I need to build a bigger factory. And, I shouldn't and, be... And the it, details of it to every year, you know what you Yes, do. yes. So, and the dream too has come to pass because within these five years, we've been able to get a big factory to process our we'll rice. We'll talk about the factory. Yeah. We'll talk about it because um, I personally was shocked when you told me you have started with, with, with the factory. Because I knew you were, you were growing or you were cultivating rice. But then another angle is how were you able to get all these rice farmers? Yes. So the, 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 the thing was, when I'm able to sell out the rice faster, or when I go to maybe a farmer, I'll take one of my outgoers like Mr. David. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Mr. David, David is producing maybe uh, 50 bags of rice. I'm able to buy from David or pick David's rice, give back his money faster. So it means that there's an edge for David knowing that always Roland will be buying rice for me, so he will keep on producing. Mm -hmm. And Roland will always pay on time. Sure. Do, do you get it? We also cushion them, mm -hmm. give them the direction for them to get funding. Yeah. If it's the banks, we serve as guarantors for them to get funding. So these were things that we did to help most of our outgoers. And were, you, were you giving them grains? Yes, yeah, so the grains that our consumers prefer, mm. that's what we want them to produce. Mm. So if you are an art grower, you produce our variety. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. consistency. Consistency. So the, the taste is uniform throughout. So it's not that someone will call and complain that the rice I bought last week was better than this week. You mm. see, the, the taste should be uniform. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So 400 acres. Yes. Only in Shama here. Oh. Shama and um, Takwa. The, the 50 acres is in Takwa mm, where you visited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a very nice wow. farm. In yeah. fact, uh, viewers, uh, the funny thing is, this interview was done, in fact, this is the second time we are doing this. We went to the, the, the farm. As you have been watching, you have, you have seen some of the aerial view of the area. But then, uh, due to some technical issues, our sound went off. It was very painful for us. But then, uh, we decided to come back all the way from Kumasi. We decided to come back uh, to Takradi again and have a second tic tac with uh, Mr. Pra, so that we get understand. Me, for instance, I am so much overwhelmed. Okay. So this is the video that had no sound. In fact, it was due to a technical problem and it was very painful to us. So we'll just give you a voiceover and we'll show you the video. This is Mr. Pra showing us through the entire farm. Now he took us first to the nursery bed. This is where he nurses all the rice seeds. Now after preparing it, putting it in water for 24 hours, spreading it in the cool dry place and also um, when it starts to germinate then he will bring it here now for here he will monitor it as it grows small small for two weeks now within these two weeks or after these two weeks it is brought here now as you can see this rice 
is ready to be transplanted and is within two to three weeks old so as we are talking now you can see that these rice have been nursed and is growing perfectly so it takes us through how to transplant the rice into the main uh, uh, farm now the funny thing is he was interested in me trying and i was also ready to learn so that is it as you can see some part has already uh, been been taken and planting has already started So I was eager to start. So as you can see, he showed me and taught me how it is done and how they even do the transplanting. So as you are seeing now, he picks it and I pick. So we are ready to go and transplant into the main farm. Now he said that there was a very huge rainfall a day before we came. So there was some aspect of the farm that was flooded. So we had to set in. That is the best farmer in Japan and I can't even walk. So he told me that you have to just take about two or three seedlings of, of the rice and you just put it in the soil and as of now everything was going fine. Now look at the pains at which Mr. Roland was just uh, planting. You could see he's always in the farm, he has been joining his laborers in the farm and they are always working. You look at me and it's not going so well. In fact, I nearly fell at this point in time. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just saw it. Uh, it wasn't intentional. I nearly fell. Now, from the look of things, you see Mr. Roland is perfect in the work because he has taken rice production as his personal work and he does it every time. Now, for me, it was obvious I wasn't, I wasn't so much good. At the point, I didn't even see any place i wasn't finding place to to plant so whilst he said we should take about two or three at a point in time i was taking five or seven so that i can i can be fast and and then uh, uh, finish look at me i'll just turn and turn and turn with plenty space around me i can't even find a place to transplant So sooner or later, Mr. Jesse finished with his, 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 his rice and was done. Me on the other hand was just playing. Now Mr. Roland finished and I was left. At this point in time, I, I think I just put the whole thing down there and I left. So this, this told me that the farmers who are giving us these foods are really, really suffering. But they are going through a lot to help us feed. So if you are enjoying rice in your house, find time and thank a farmer who grew it. Okay, so here we were having fun. Jesse is my course mate. We all completed the same school, so we were we were just having fun doing some check chat. But as you can see, some part of the farm are flooded, and he said with time they will all dry out and the rice can 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 come out perfectly. So at a point, I think I asked him about the drainage system. How does water come into the farm? By the way, Mr. Jesse has its own his own dam very huge dam the project that he supervised later he rented the whole land and start using it so this is the land that he supervised to do a project of uh, the dam building a dam and so this is the farm and he was taking me through 
how the channels and the tunnels are created and how they block aspect of it to make sure that water gets through all the other parts and as you can see he's showing me that when water is coming from that far end here can be blocked if the main tunnel is blocked then the water is forced to pass through the other side and i think it was very very exciting and it was very very interesting this is the dam as you can see very huge dam and water is channeled through these tunnels and the rice is and the rice is adequately served with water so this is the end of this part we will continue with the next one where mr pra gives us a lot of details on how to invest in fact he actually gave us annually how much he earns from doing rice and i think this is the most important and interesting part that you should watch so don't forget to subscribe if you are still watching subscribe to this channel jack lens tv since we have a lot to bring you and make sure you click on the notification icon so that you'll be notified anytime we post new videos thank you guys for watching and i hope you love it comment share and give us a thumbs up we love you all and you have any farm that you are doing you have any job that you are starting up you have any skill that you are developing and you want us to come have a check touch with you just give us a call on 0249 79 30 45 and i repeat 0249 79 30 45 we will talk to you and we'll plan something out have a nice day